To be successful in AP Chemistry, you need to be very familiar with the periodic table of the elements. Now, you probably learned this in a first-year chemistry class or even a different science class in, in the past, but you need to know the symbols of the elements, and we'll talk about some of the regions or parts of the periodic table that you need to know about. You know, knowing the symbols, very important. Uh, the periodic table that they give you on the AP exam does not have the names on there, it just has the symbols and other numerical data. So you need to know these names and symbols very well. Know that Fe, for example, is iron, or that Sn is tin, or Br is for bromine. Uh, Na, of course, is sodium. Hope you realize that. He is helium. Mg would be magnesium. Uh, As, arsenic, right? P would be phosphorus. K is for potassium. I'm trying to use some on here that students sometimes confuse. Just as an example, some students might confuse potassium and phosphorus, the K and the P. Uh, Ni for nickel. Uh, Cu is for copper. Uh, Ti for titanium. Not tin, but titanium. So make sure that you know the symbols of the elements very well. Sometimes there are questions that pop up on the AP exam and students get tripped up because they don't know titanium from tin when they look at the symbol and they lose the point because of that. Also know about periods and groups. We'll talk more about this later on in the course, but be aware that the periods are the horizontal rows that are going across the periodic table. On the current periodic table that we use uh, as of the the time of this recording, we have seven periods on the table. These two down here uh, are actually, this this one in blue, at, or in uh, blue here, actually goes along with period six, and the red one down here goes along with period seven as well. They're just extracted from the body of the table. Uh, it's important to know that the period number that an element is in also tells us the number of uh, filled energy levels that that element has. So for example, if we were to look at um, sodium as an example, it's in period three, we say that it has three energy levels. And we'll talk more about what that means a little bit later in the course. Now, the groups, these are the vertical columns that are going up and down. Uh, there are, the way I have it drawn here, about basically 18 groups. And members of a group have similar chemical properties. Sometimes the groups are called families, just, just for that reason. Uh, for example, uh, most, basically all of the metals in group one, starting with lithium and moving on down towards cesium here, they uh, are extremely reactive in water, just as an example. Um, group 18, all of those in group 18 are gases and they're fairly unreactive gases. They have similar chemical properties. Now some of these groups do have names that you need to be aware of. For example, group one, those are called the alkali metals. These are just names that you have to learn. You have to know those. Group two, those are called the alkaline earth metals. Be careful there. Sometimes students get confused between group one and group two on the table. Now, group 16 over here, these are called the oxygen group. Sometimes they're called the chalcogens as well, but the more common name is oxygen group. Uh, group 17, that's, those are called the halogens. And group 18 are called the noble gases. Not every group has a, a, a name that you have to learn, but these are the main ones that you need to be aware of. You also need to know that we can classify elements by their metallic properties. Now, notice on this version of the table, I've drawn a, a stair-step line here toward the right side of the table. That generally separates metals from the non-metals. Usually the metals are on the left side of the periodic table. So as you can see here, the ones I have shaded in gray except for hydrogen, uh, the ones on the left side of that stair-step line, those are metals. And as you probably know, metals have a lustrous or a very shiny property to them. They are usually pretty good at conducting heat and electricity. They're malleable, which means that we can hammer them into a sheet like foil or something like that. 
they are uh, ductile, which means that we can stretch them out into a wire if we want to. Now, the nonmetals are generally located on the right side of that stair step line, with the exception of hydrogen, and nonmetals are basically the complete opposite of the metals. They're insulators, that means that they don't conduct very well. They're brittle. If they're in a solid form and you hit them with a hammer, they will basically shatter. A lot of them are gases. Uh, especially toward the right side of the table. Now notice that there are a few that we didn't talk about. Those are the ones that are touching the stair-step line with the exception of, of just a couple. Those are the metalloids. Uh, they have some properties of metals, some properties of nonmetals. We sometimes call those semiconductors because under certain circumstances they conduct, sometimes they don't. Uh, the ones that touch the stair-step line, generally except for aluminum and polonium, those are the metalloids. Now we can also classify elements by the way in which they follow predictable patterns. If we look at the two groups on the far left side of the table and the six on the far right side of the table, those are the elements that follow patterns very well, very closely. Those are called the representative elements. And we call them that because they are used to represent the patterns on the periodic table very often. Uh, now, there are these elements in the middle, the ones that are kind of look like they've been pushed down, groups 3 through 12. Those are called the transition metals or transition elements sometimes. Those have properties that aren't quite as predictable. Um, they're not as reactive, generally speaking. They are usually very durable. You normally have a fairly, fairly high melting point. We use those in building things like iron and copper and titanium. Then we have these uh, two uh, sections here that have been, look like they've been pulled out of the body of the table. Those are called the inner transition metals. We sometimes call those the lanthanides and actinides because the first member of this section here is lanthanum, so you know, lanthanides, and then the one down here is actinium, so those are the actinides in the second section. But uh, a lot of these, especially the actinides, are radioactive. Uh, Sometimes uh, they're used for high-tech items. They may be found in your cell phone, other important items. Generally speaking, they would belong right here in that part of the table. But uh, since if we had them in the body of the table, the table would actually be twice as wide. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, we usually just put a little star or something and we draw those down there toward the bottom of the table. Hope you learned something about the periodic table in this review. As you get ready for AP Chemistry, hope you subscribe and thanks for watching.